we are just a few weeks away from one of the biggest milestones in the AFL. Scott Pendlebury is just three matches away from joining five other men in the history of the sport to play 400 games at the top level. We saw that over 92,000 people flocked to the MCG to watch Dustin Martin play his 300th, and you would think that Pendlebury's record will see even more people attend. It just happens that if all goes well, his 400th game will be a Collingwood home match and will be against Carlton. What an occasion it will be. Not only will it celebrate Pendlebury's milestone, but the implications of the winner and loser are likely to be critical in the way that the season pans out. But to the man himself, he's had a career so far that will see him end up in the AFL Hall of Fame and as a Collingwood legend. In fact, he might just be the greatest player the club has ever produced, and if you factor in the modern era, it's probably not close. He has everything covered from peak performance, finals play, and longevity. The way he has gotten to 400 itself is just through consistency. In his first year in 2006, he played nine games, and since that point, just three seasons have seen him play in less than 20 home and away season games. And that includes the 2020 COVID year. If it feels like you have seen Pendlebury running around forever, it's because he has nearly played two full decades without missing a significant portion of games. His peak was as good as we have ever seen. Between 2010 and 2019, ages 22 to 31, Pendlebury was selected six times as an All-Australian and won five Copeland trophies for Collingwood's best and fairest player. He also won three Anzac Day medals, including back-to-back -back in 2010 and 2011, while taking home the AFL Coaches Association Champion Player Award for 2013. Three times he has polled more than 20 Brownlow votes, and for 12, yes 12 straight years, he polled at least 13. Currently, he sits fifth for all-time votes. Again, this all focuses on his excellent play over such a long period of time. Then, there is what he has done for his club when it's mattered most. The two premierships are up there in terms of the most satisfying in Collingwood's history. Who can forget 2010 when they held on for a draw against St Kilda before dominating them in the famous rematch? Pendlebury won the rematch Norm Smith medal, gathering 29 disposals, 6 clearances and laying 11 tackles. Then, in a whole other Collingwood era, he led, although not as captain, the club to another premiership. Coming into 2022, not many thought they would even play finals. Two seasons later, they were the champions. I think Pendles might have played better in the 2023 Grand Final than in 2010. He was so composed in the fourth quarter and overall had 24 disposals and kicked a crucial goal. He captained the club from 2014 to 2022. And no matter who was the coach, where the club was on the ladder, who the players around him were and the outside noise, he has been the calm head and consistent force of multiple Collingwood generations. Why I've always wanted to try and make the most of my career and like look after my body really well and say no to drinks and that's why I'm still here. My mates would say socially they don't see me that often. There is a cost in that. The reason why I've done what I've done, it definitely feels validated because of this. If I'm getting another goal at it at 35, it's pretty rare and I'm really happy to be in this situation. Hey, what'd you do? Pendlebury's soon-to-be achievement of 400 games is another indicator that the AFL as a whole is changing quickly. Of the top 15 players for all-time games played, there is a trend. 11 of the 15 finished up in the 2000s, with Travis Boak, Tom Hawkins and Scott Pendlebury the only three current players in that top 15. Out of those 11 players that finished in the 2000s, Seven of them come from 2015 onwards, including Brent Harvey, Dustin Fletcher, Pendlebury, David Mundy, Adam Goods, Boak and Hawkins. The more the AFL has progressed, 
the longer our great players are playing. Essendon captain Zach Merritt in an interview about a month ago echoed this shift in attitude. Now he is a driven footballer and self-confessed addict to the sport, but these quotes were interesting. I'm not sure my partner will love me saying this, but I have ambitions and have set my life up with the way I go about my footy to still be playing in six, eight, ten years time. That's the goal at the moment. He then followed by saying, the dynamic's shifting a bit and guys are playing for longer which is awesome, but I've certainly got ambitions to play for a long time. If there is a player to follow in their footsteps, Scott Pendlebury is the one. The dreaded 30 next to a footballer's age used to signal one year contracts. It also meant you might be lucky to have another two or three years left, but not anymore. We all know the nutrition advancements and the scientific training that clubs are implementing, but for the good and great players, the change goes deeper. It's not just a sports science movement, but a cultural shift in AFL environments. Experience and leadership is just so valuable in building a club. We've seen it with North Melbourne, West Coast and Richmond of late, and other teams before that, that when the top of the playing squad is weak in terms of depth and quality of experience, it often filters down. It's why a guy like Pendlebury has been thrown out as an option for North Melbourne if Collingwood would ever let him go. And even Mark Robinson on AFL 360 said Tasmania should look at Pendlebury as a possible coaching option in the future. Now the science of performance and recovery has no doubt helped Pendlebury. He has sacrificed a lot to keep physically and mentally sharp, as he said in the video clip. Guys like Travis Boak, Christian Petrarca and AFL clubs themselves have been putting out videos of late just showing how much work gets done resting up. Whether it's cold plunges, mobilisation or massage therapy, all these little things add up in the long term. Since 2018, when Pendlebury turned 30, he hasn't dipped below 21 disposals per game for a season average and he's totaled 53 Brownlow votes won a best and fairest, and a premiership. He's just one of a whole new wave of players to play some of their career best football well into their 30s. Tom Hawkins since turning 30 has won a Coleman medal and been all Australian a remarkable four times. He's also kicked at least 49 goals every year since turning 30 besides this season. How about another key forward in Taylor Walker? His career looked over at 30 years old, finishing 2020, kicking just 15 goals in 14 games. His revival has resulted in 76 goals in 2023, which followed great totals of 47 and 48 goals in the previous two years. Western Bulldog midfielder Tom Liberatore had his career best season in 2023. And look at what Dane Zorko is doing for Brisbane right now playing a rebounding role out of defence. He's 35 and has also said he wants to play well into his late 30s. Pendlebury is the poster boy for this new era of longevity and clearly will be a player others follow on how to navigate the latter parts of their careers. He's had some luck with no long-term serious injury, but there is no one more professional in the sport. It has been no fluke he has gotten to 400 AFL games and his impact on Collingwood and the AFL for nearly two decades has been immense.